The psalmist writes, the Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbour his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, as we are bowed before you, assembled before your throne of grace, grant that we may not be distracted by wandering thoughts and shallow affection. Cause us to be deaf to the clamouring cries of the world, cries that call us to abandon you and to seek our comfort in that which is perishing. May we present ourselves with empty hands, not coming to worship you through our works and our merits, but simply by faith alone in Christ alone. And Father, we come as living sacrifices offering ourselves to you completely. And we come robed right in the righteousness of our Lord and Saviour Jesus the Christ, acknowledging that we can only come to you through him. And may our worship this morning and always be in spirit and in truth. And this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our first hymn of praise this morning is number 16. All our um, hymns are printed on a little bulletin. Hymn number 16. Hallelujah, praise Jehovah, O oh my soul, Jehovah, praise. <coughs>
for us. We found together today worshipping you, our one true living God. And Father, I pray that we would be given a new sense of who you are, that you are a holy God, a merciful God, you are an all-knowing God, an all-powerful God, and your train fills all of your creation. Father, let us not put you aside somewhere, in some point, in some form of retirement. Let us not concentrate on one person only, the Trinity. May our worship be of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Worshiping God the Father through God the Son and in and through the power of the Holy Spirit. Give us, Father, a fresh view of you, the triune God. Father, we come as living sacrifices, we come offering ourselves up in an act of worship. And truly these souls we gathered here this morning have sacrificed comforts, have sacrificed time, and sacrificed their hearts just to be here in this place. And Father, I praise and I thank you for each one of them. I pray, Father, that as we prepare for worship, that we indeed would know your presence among us, that we would know the presence of our Saviour Jesus, and we would feel the warmth of his Spirit in the very marrows of our bones. And Father, we come before you in a prayer of confession. Father, we confess our sins, our transgressions, and our iniquities. The Lord, we have even this day harbored unwholesome thoughts about you, about our neighbors, Possibly, Lord, about our loved ones. Temptation sits crouching at our door. And such little things can turn our eyes off the Good Shepherd. We are offended, we are upset, we can't get our way, whatever it may be, Father that causes us to stumble. We confess those to you now. And Father, I pray that the Holy Spirit would search each heart, that he would lay it bare before us, not for the world to see, but for us to see ourselves as we really are. Reveal to us those things, Lord, that we need to confess, those things which we need to repent of. And Father, I pray that we would be bold and courageous, that we would be pliable clay in his hands, that we would take any chastisement in the sense of love that it has given to us. Further sanctify us through this, I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Old Testament reading this morning comes from Isaiah chapter 43, and we're going to read or have read to us uh, verses 1 through to 13. I've asked Ian uh, to read those for us this morning, and um, as Ian comes forward, let me ask God's blessing upon the reading and our hearing of this word. Let's pray. Well, Father of heaven, this is your inherent word. This is the inspired scripture that comes from your lips. And Father, I pray that we would hear them as that. Not just the necessary component that we do in church, that some obligatory 
uh, need to, to read your word. But make us eager to hear this word. And may the Holy Spirit open our ears so that it, it penetrates past our ears and into our very hearts. Bless this reading to us, I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Ian. It's verse 1 to 18, is it? 1 to 13. Isaiah chapter 43, and we're reading from verse 1 to 13. But now, thus says the Lord, who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt for your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in your place. Since you were precious in my sight, you have been honored, and I have loved you. Therefore I will give men for you, and people for your life. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your descendants from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not keep them back. Bring my sons from afar, and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory, I have formed him, yes, I have made him. Bring out the blind people who have eyes, and the deaf who have ears. Let all the nations be gathered together, and let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this, and show us former things? Let them bring out their witnesses, that one may be justified. Or let them hear and say, it is truth. You are my witnesses, says the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, nor shall there be after me. I even I am the Lord, and besides me there is no Saviour. I have declared and saved, I have proclaimed, and there was no foreign God among you. Therefore you are my witnesses, says the Lord, that I am God. Indeed, before the day was, I am he, and there is no one who can deliver out of my hand. I work, and who will reverse it? May the Lord bless this reading to our hearts and our understanding. Amen. Thank you, Ian. <clears throat> who indeed, who indeed can revoke the works of God? Who indeed? And brethren, why is, why is this time, this weekend, so important to us? Again, without the death and shame and glorification of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, we would not understand what has just been read to us. It would sound nice, it would sound good, but there'd be no real understanding in our hearts of what that meant. And I love that part that he read out, that, that no one can take anything from my hand. Not even me, not even you. 
Let's worship our Lord God once again. This time we'll sing hymn number 400 and can it be that I should go?
probably become aware we don't take up an offering uh, under our COVID safe plan, but there's opportunities, there's plates at the, at the front door, and I think there's a plate here. Uh, if anybody wants to um, leave uh, their offering, their, their tithe, or their free will offering, uh, you're most welcome to do that. If you're visiting with us today, please don't feel obligated. Uh, your presence with us and, our op and the opportunity we have to minister to you is, is, is a wonderful thing for us to do. Let's, let's give thanks. Our Father in heaven, <clears throat> Lord, it, it seems such a pedestrian thing almost to to, to thank you for, for gifts given and, and ties offered up. But Lord, without the most precious gift that you have given to us, and a gift because we have received that gift, is the gift of your Son, Jesus the Christ, not only is the gift of your son, but what your son has won and brought, brought for us. Our redemption, through his death, through his incarnation rather, through his death, his resurrection and his ascension and glorification, we have been reconciled to you. You have reconciled us to yourself. You are no longer at war with us and Father forgive us for those times and we lose sight of that and, and we, we think in our hearts in anger why me God why is this happening to me we are at peace eternal peace as we are reminded in Isaiah this morning uh, those things that you place in your hands and not taken away. You do not break your covenant promises to us. So Father, we thank you for that. We thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the gift of faith and repentance that you have given to us through our Saviour, Christ Jesus. And Father, I thank you for this place this sheepfold tucked into the side of the hill here in Nambour, where we can come freely, week by week, we can come any day. Mm. Gather together collectively, and we can come together by ourselves and worship you the one true living God. And Father, we praise you and we thank you for that. We thank you, Father, for this sojourn that you have set us upon, this race that you have set before us, this race that we don't run alone. With every every pace, with every every time our foot hits the ground, we, we stand on holy ground. But you have said that you promised to us that you'll never leave us, and your spirit is with us always. We are never alone. So Father, we thank you for that. Lord, I thank you for any gifts that have been brought here this morning and offered up. I pray, Father, that we would receive these gifts as your gifts, as gifts to you. That we would not be tardy with them. That we would be generous. That we would share these gifts in the proclamation of your word, in the maintenance of the ministry here, not only to one another, but to a lost and perishing world. And we would use these gifts for the benefit of all mankind. That we would be bold and courageous in using them so that those who are yet to hear the gospel call those of you who are set apart to hear it would indeed hear it, even through the, the, the shaking and, and fearful endeavours of saints like us. 
Father, I thank you for all of them. I thank you for the sacrifice that each one's made. For some, this sacrifice would be seen as folly. But for us, it is an opportunity to, to lay our hearts in, in love and adoration and, and submission unto you. So, Father, we thank you for this. And thank you too, Lord, for the way you've answered our prayers and we've cried out to you and we've remonstrated with you when we have been in crisis members of our family have loved ones those times Lord when we have just felt so so lost so helpless so discouraged by what goes on around us in this world what goes on in our own country, Australia. A land of opportunity, a land of plenty, a land of great blessings. And yet we see your name trampled on, rejected. We see your church under assault. Mere fact, we may confess publicly that we are Christian is enough to bring down the eye of the world upon us. So on those times, Father, strengthen our soul. And may this Easter Sunday, this Resurrection Sunday, may it reinforce to us that you are indeed our God and Jesus is our Lord and Saviour. May we be like Mary and proclaim her Lord as our Lord. And Father, I pray for our church. <clears throat> I pray for your church, and I pray for our church. And I pray for our denomination. I pray, Father, first for your church, which we are a part of, the Holy Catholic Church, the Church Universal, that knows no denominational boundaries. Father, I pray that it would be strengthened that in these fires of adversity we would find our voice, we would find our courage, we would be prepared to sacrifice all to defend the truth of your gospel. Father, make us men and women of, of our faith of uncompromising faith. Let us be done with terms like for the greater good. Let us just be defenders of the simple gospel as preached to us by our Saviour Jesus Christ, by his apostles, by faithful adherence to your word down through the generations. Father, I pray for our denomination as there is uncertainty in the days ahead. We are unsure of how high a mountain we have to climb or how great the obstacle is. But whatever it is, strengthen us in our resolve to maintain a defense of the great doctrinal truths that we believe are given to us through your word. And Father, I pray for the lost. I pray for the lost and perishing, for the elect out there who are yet to be found, for the lost sheep, the lost lambs, regardless of age, regardless of gender, regardless of nationality. Use us, even us, to bring the, the knowledge of salvation to their ears so that the Holy Spirit may work his wonderful work of regeneration in their hearts. And this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.